Well, hi there. I want to tell you about this aquarium here. I call it my Gull Lake Shallows Aquarium. And I set it up in, uh, in early July. It's now late October, so it's been going for quite a few months. And here's how I set it up. Um, I started with some sand, not lake sand, but, but um, sand from a windblown sand dune, which I sieve to get out all the, uh, you know, all the big bits. And then, uh, then I filled it up with water from the lake. And I added a clump of sago pondweed, which is the most common um, aquatic macrophyte in, in that lake in, in Alberta. By this is Gull Lake, Alberta, we're talking about. And, uh, and then, you know, I added the little um, LED um, light fixture. Nothing special about that. And uh, just a simple bubbler, just an air hose weighted down with a little rock at the end. And the bubbler turns on when the light turns on. They're both on a timer, about 12 hours of light uh, per day. So that's, you know, that's it. And, uh, and it's been such a fascinating tank. Now, um, originally I set it up for scuds for Hyalella uh, scuds. We call them Hyalella Azteca, but apparently the taxonomy is in a big, big uh, kerfuffle right now, so we don't really know what species name to use here in Alberta. Anyway, the Hyalella scuds, and my question was, do they make interesting sounds underwater? It turns out the answer is no, but they're still really um, neat things to watch, and they've been breeding uh, very well in this tank. Uh, they uh, they feed on mostly on vegetable matter so what I do is I put in goldfish food um, most days and that's either going to be pellets or flakes because goldfish food has a lot of um, a lot of plant material in it and the scuds seem to be doing really really super well. Now they're not the only things in the tank there are also uh, countless Daphnia. I took one out and, and prepared it for uh, examination under the microscope. They're Daphnia Schoedleri and those uh, little critters are um, multiplying hugely as well uh, which is nice and I, I don't know exactly what they're feeding on. Usually you, you raise Daphnia on uh, you know green water with a lot of planktonic algae but They've completely cleaned all the algae out of the water here, at least the, the uh, suspended algae. So who knows what they're eating, but maybe they're eating the goldfish food. But whatever they're eating, they're doing fine. Um, they, you know, originally there, there were very few Daphnia and lots and lots of little Diaptimus, another type of planktonic crustacean. Now the Diaptimus have become almost non-existent, but who knows, maybe they'll come back. This tank has its ups and downs. Uh, the other um, recent population boom has been uh, the ostracods, the seed shrimp, and there are lots and lots of ostracods in there. The ostracods move smoothly through the water, the way water mites do, although I don't seem to have any water mites, uh, whereas the Daphnia use their antennae and they ping through the water in, in little um, little strokes, so it's pretty easy to tell them apart even, even without any kind of magnification. So they're doing very well, and then uh, and then there are some Corixids, some water boatmen. Now I really like Corixids, and I've originally I had some Cena Corixidacatensis in here, and they uh, they actually uh, reproduced and had a, a second generation. But I've taken those out, and now I have Coricella tarsalis. Uh, there are three of them. Uh, one of them died, and and I thought, well, that's too bad. And then I counted them, and there were three. So. Actually, I say there's three. Who knows how many there are? I thought there were three to begin with. Uh, but they're doing which is just fine, and they've been in there for uh, more than a month, and they seem to they seem to scavenge for the fish food, but they also, I mean, you, you watch them, and every once in a while, it looks like maybe they're going to catch one of those. Um, maybe they have caught one of those Daphnia or um, ostracods. Um, so, Great, whatever, whatever is, uh, is working is working. 
There are other things in there as well that I haven't gotten any footage of. There are pristina worms. There's at least one um, uh, red coronamid midge larva. Uh, and I'm sure that there are countless little um, uh, rotifers and protists of, of one sort or another. So it's, you know, it's a complex, uh, complex little tank. I'm, I'm not going to make the naive claim that it's balanced ecologically. I'm sure that uh, that these populations will fluctuate and, and many of them will fluctuate to extinction eventually, but it's the best um, sort of freshwater tank, um, local freshwater tank that I've ever had. You know, I've often had uh, pond bug tanks, but you know what usually happens is you get all excited about some big uh, water beetle or giant water bug and it eats everybody else and then you just have one hungry bug in there or all the bugs die and you're, and you're stuck with one snail or one leech and those those tanks are really kind of boring to me. But this one I like. So it's now, um, did I say this already? It's now late October. We'll see how, how uh, how this thing uh, you know holds up going into the winter but uh, for the moment it's a pretty fun tank and I thought I would share the fun with you.